Hi everyone, this is Alex from Salmonella Place and I am back with another pharmacology lecture. Uh, today's topic is going to be serotonin and serotonin receptor antagonists. Again, like I say in every video, I just want to let you know if there's something I've missed out, there's something you don't understand, or there's something you'd like me to go into in more detail, please comment below this video or send us an email at info at salmonellaplace.com. That's info at salmonellaplace.com. I hope you enjoy it. So guys, the first thing I want to talk about is what is serotonin? Serotonin is an autocoid, which means that it's a local hormone, and it's also a monoamine transmitter, and it's found in the brain, as well as in the periphery. In the periphery, you can find it in the gut wall, especially in the small intestine, in the enteromochromaffin cells, and neurons. It is also found in platelets and central nervous system neurons. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about the synthesis of serotonin. Serotonin starts off as tryptophan. It is then hydroxylated to 5-hydroxytryptophan. It is then carboxylated to 5-hydroxytryptamine. It is then broken down into an intermediate with MAO and then aldehyde dehydrogenase forms 5-hydroxyindoleic acid. Inocytyl triphosphate is stimulated and causes platelet stimulation. Cyclic AMP stimulation causes platelet inhibition. So this regulates the release of serotonin from the platelets. Now I'm going to talk a bit about serotonin receptors. There are seven types, but five, six, and seven are not characterized. Smooth muscle receptors cause vasoconstriction and endothelial receptors cause vasodilation. This is a general rule within the receptors. So, we're going to call the receptors 5-HT, 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. This is because it's 5-hydroxytryptamine, number 1, number 2, number 3. 5-HT receptor 1 is coupled to the GI protein, which means it decreases cyclic AMP. This inhibits neurons and cerebral vasoconstriction. You can find these receptors in the meningeal vascular beds. 5-HT receptor 2 is coupled to GQ protein, which is IP3 and DAG. They have A, B and C subgroups. A causes platelet aggregation and smooth muscle contraction. B causes vasoconstriction or vasodilation, depending on where it is in the body. And C causes cerebrospinal fluid secretion. In addition, they all generally do the following. Smooth muscle contraction, in the bronchi, the gut, and the uterus, and mesenteric and pulmonary vasoconstriction. This receptor is endothelium dependent. That means it's nitrous oxide dependent in order for vasodilation to occur in the meningeal vessels and meningeal bed, also in the striated muscle vessels. 5-HT receptor 3 is a non-ligand gated ion channel. It causes neuronal excitation and emesis. It's found on the sensory nerve endings, and can cause Parkinson's sensation and vomiting. This occurs if the GI mucosa is irritated. In the area prostroma, which is known as the chemosensitive trigger zone, this is where the emesis comes from. Dopamine 2 receptor agonists have the same effect. So do anti-cancer drugs, because they release serotonin from the enterochromaffin cells in the GI. 5-HT receptors number 4 are in control of GI motility. This is a rather unknown receptor, and it increases capillary permeability. This causes edema. Serotonin is functionally redundant. This means that the CNS functions, such as pain, sleep, mood, and appetite, are not solely controlled by serotonin. Its target tissues, which are the smooth muscle, bronchi, gut, uterus, and vessels, are either vasoconstricted, in the case of smooth muscle, or vasodilated, as with the others respectively. Now guys, I'm going to tell you about the serotonin receptor agonists, which are the drugs. So let's start. Buspirone and Gepirone are partial agonists. They are agonists of the 5-1A receptors and they are anti-anxiety drugs. Sumatriptan, Naratriptan and Rezatriptan are 5-1D agonists. These are anti-migraine drugs. They cause vasoconstriction in the meningeal vessels. These are full agonists. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about migraines. Migraine, otherwise known as a severe headache, usually found in women. It's a throbbing unilateral pain 
which can cause vomiting and visual disturbances. It can go on for hours or even days, and these are due to the meningeal nerve fibres. The mechanism is as follows. Substance P and CGRP activation with an unknown mechanism, cause edema and vasodilation. These activators are polymodal receptors. The edema and vasodilation increase the production of prostaglandins and they stimulate the pain fibers. The side effects of these drugs are coronary vasoconstriction and dysrhythmias. They're taken orally. Serotonin blocks the pathomechanism path of migraine. It does this in three ways. Firstly, it opens the potassium channels to decrease fiber excitability, so there's no action potential. Secondly, it inhibits neuropeptide release. Therefore, it inhibits the neurogenic inflammation. And thirdly, it causes vasoconstriction in the meningeal vessels and decreases the artery pulsation, which inhibits the nerve endings. Now I'm gonna talk about the next drug which is ergotamine. It's a 5-HT1A agonist, and it's a partial agonist. It's given through oral, IV, rectal, and some bilingual ways, and it lasts for 24 hours. It gives strong vasoconstriction, which can lead to hypertension. It inhibits trigeminal nerve transmission. Side effects are nausea, vomiting, uterine contractions, and fetal damage. Other serotonin agonists which aren't really used are the following. A serotonin-2 receptor agonist could be LSD. Serotonin-3 receptor agonists have no clinical use. Serotonin-4 receptor agonists are metoclopramide or cisapride. These are dopamine-2 antagonists. They are used for GI disorders, prokinetics, and increased motility. Now I'm gonna go on to talk about serotonin receptor antagonists. So serotonin one receptor antagonists are as follows. They're not clinically used. Serotonin two receptor antagonists, ketanserine and rifanserine. Also, mirtazapine. These are used for vasospasms as such in Raynaud's syndrome. Mirtazapine is an alpha blocker and is used for depression treatment. Pizotifen is used for migraine prophylaxis. We also use cyproheptadine and methysergide. Cyproheptadine is a histamine 1 agonist and can cause sedation and weight gain. Methysergide is used for carcinoid tumors and can cause mediastinal and peritoneal fibrosis. Pizotifen can cause weight gain and is a muscarinic receptor blocker. Migraines can also occur from serotonin overproduction. So that's why we have drugs that are used that are agonists and antagonists against serotonin. Clozapine is a dopamine 2 receptor blocker and that's the last one we're using for migraine treatment. 5-HT3 receptor blockers on Desatron, Granucetron and Tropicetron are antiemetics. They're the first order therapy with anti-cancer drugs and they don't have large side effects. Now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the related drugs that are used with serotonin receptors and agonists and antagonists and then we'll finish the lecture. So tricyclic antidepressants inhibit uptake 1. This inhibits the serotonin reuptake and it's used as an antidepressant. Also, MAO inhibitors and serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors, which are also used for antidepressants, inhibit serotonin reuptake and inhibit the methylation of serotonin. Phenfluramine decreases the appetite and increases serotonin release. Its side effect is pulmonary hypertension. So guys, I hope you found this useful and I'm gonna see you soon with another pharmacology lecture.